Hey, good morning. Meteorologist Scott Pillier here with your Tropics Outlook and discussion for June 13th, 2021. A little bit more to talk about closer to home in the southern Gulf of Mexico this morning. Officially now tracking Invest 92L in the southern part of the Gulf and the Bay of Campeche. Basically what that means is the National Hurricane Center is investigating or monitoring an area of disturbed weather for possible tropical depression, or tropical storm development over the next three to five days. Nothing imminent heading our way along the northern Gulf Coast, at least for the next couple of days. But as we head towards the latter part of this week, definitely some implications to our forecast locally from this area of disturbed weather, regardless of whether or not this develops into a bona fide tropical depression or storm. I think some heavy rain is going to be the big storyline with this uh, as the tropical moisture, regardless of whether it develops or not, starts to lift uh, towards the north as we head towards the latter part of this week. So let's kind of break it down. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the video below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We'll be doing these updates throughout hurricane season as always. Hopefully we don't have to do a ton of these updates, but of course I'll be here uh, with the updates as needed this Atlantic hurricane season. So Invest 92L, looking a little bit more organized this morning. I'll kind of outline some things for you. Here's this kind of area of disturbed weather. In the southern part of the Bay of Campeche, you can see this kind of broad area of counterclockwise spin here. Big cluster of storms firing up over Belize and the Yucatan kind of spiraling in here. You've got uh, somewhat of an area of low pressure that looks to be developing uh, in the south and western part of the Bay of Campeche, right about here. Now, it's possible that over the next 48 hours or so, we start to see a little bit more congealing and coalescing uh, of this area of disturbed weather in the southern part of the Bay of Campeche. However, big ridge of high pressure to the north uh, is going to keep whatever starts to fester in the southern part of the Gulf, it's going to keep it trapped down here. Big ridge of high pressure off towards the west, that's going to usher a northerly wind flow or wind component over this broad area of low pressure. So it's not going to be able to move to the north in the short term. It's kind of just trapped down there. It's possible that we do see a depression, though, form over the next 48 hours and maybe even uh, go inland close towards Veracruz and Tampico. So heavy rainfall, big concern for the southern and western part of Mexico over the next two to four days. But let's talk about what could happen down the road. That's kind of life number one of this tropical disturbance is its life in the southern Gulf. But as we go towards mid to late week, possible that we start to see this start to take more of a northerly uh, motion or a northerly component to its motion, and that could potentially bring some heavy rainfall, uh, certainly, to parts of the northern Gulf Coast as we head into the latter part of this week and into next weekend. So still in the longer range, five to six days out, but uh, something that folks along the northern Gulf Coast should be keeping an eye out for, for increased rain and potential tropical impacts later this week. Of what category? Uh, and of what strength, that is still really, really difficult to predict this stage of the game. But typically, these early season systems, primary concern is heavy rainfall along and way east of where that center of disturbed weather actually is located. This looks to be one of those classic scenarios where it's kind of lopsided, almost tropical, subtropical uh, in nature, where you get that big uh, kind of eastern side with most of the thunderstorm action and really not much over the center or on the western side at all. So more on that here in a moment. Let's talk about some of the latest from the National Hurricane Center, now giving a 50% chance for tropical development. I'll kind of outline that for you. Here's their latest statements with regards to it. 50% chance of tropical development into a depression or named storm. The next name on the list would be Bill with a B, so a 50% chance that we get a tropical depression or storm to form over the next three to five days. And I would kind of garner that these percentages will start to increase based on the model data that I've seen. 
it looks as if somewhat of a weak to moderate tropical storm will likely try to develop mid to late week in the western part of the Gulf. So look for those percentages to gradually increase with this disturbance as it begins to lift north late week. But again, no imminent concerns for the northern Gulf Coast, at least for the next couple of days. Looking at surface observations, uh, we do actually have, notice right here, some westerly and northwesterly winds. So you've got uh, your easterly winds, north uh, westerly winds, westerly winds. So there is a broad area of low pressure that has developed in the southern part of the Gulf. Now, whether or not this starts to organize a little bit more down here, that's still kind of a question mark. But again, there is a broad area of low pressure. So if it starts to get more thunderstorms around that center of low pressure, then we may indeed see a depression form a little bit quicker. But again, that's just kind of life number one of this system. Life number two looks to be in the late part of this week where it has kind of a second chapter to the story. Let's talk about that. I want to kind of show you one of the forecast models uh, with regards to the setup of where this system may go in the mid to latter part of this week. So let's kind of show you this. And I'm going to go towards the western part of the Atlantic Basin and we'll scroll down here for you. And I'll put this on height norm anomaly. So what does that mean? Uh, basically, you're looking at the atmospheric heights in the atmosphere. This helps us depict areas of high pressure and low pressure. So the areas in red, that is where we got atmospheric high pressure. So a big ridge of high pressure over parts of Texas and towards the Four Corners region. That is what is keeping Invest 92L, you can see it down here, that faint shading of blue, Invest 92L isn't going to be able to move very much in the next couple of days. Why is that? This area of high pressure, clockwise flow around it, is going to usher a kind of northerly component trapping our tropical disturbance in the southern Gulf. So it's really not going to be moving very much in the next three or so days. To the east, what we have is a kind of uh, elongated trough. This is going to play a role in our system's life later in the week as our disturbance finally starts to feel that upper level trough and likely starts to get pulled more towards the north. So let's talk about this. We're going to move this forward in time and I'll show you. By Tuesday and into Wednesday, that high pressure system that we've got out west it begins to back off just a tad. Notice how that red is a little bit less pronounced. Meanwhile, that trough, remember I outlined it over here? This is Wednesday. That trough starts to become a little bit more defined. And as that happens, that trough that I'm outlining here in pink starts to uh, really get locked into place, if you will. That eventually starts to carve out this high pressure system enough that if there is anything left, whether it's a tropical depression, lopsided, elongated tropical storm, uh, or what have you, it will start to feel the influence of this upper level trough over the eastern seaboard and start to get pulled to the north. Now, exactly how strong the system is uh, and exactly where it develops, whether it develops over here, over here, or if it fails to develop at all, eventually that moisture associated with the system will likely start to get pulled north. So notice as we go towards Friday, this is Friday evening, high pressure starts to build back in a little bit over this system like so, and it begins to slow down as it kind of takes a general path somewhere towards the northern Gulf Coast. Exactly where? Uh, that's just a little bit too difficult to pinpoint right now, but it looks as if on the GFS forecast model, somewhat of a lopsided, elongated tropical storm does try to develop in the west central Gulf by Friday and Saturday. Now, with these early season systems, I've kind of mentioned it before, the main concern is usually way less about wind impacts, but all about the rain impacts. And sometimes the rain impacts can extend hundreds of miles away from where the actual center is. Sometimes over the center, 
there's not much happening. So this is going to be one of those systems where we watch it. Uh, it's not anything to be overly concerned about with regards to strength, but it is something for the northern Gulf Coast that is worth paying attention to. Uh, because, again, it's been a very soggy spring for parts of Louisiana and southeast Texas. So uh, we're going to have to watch that rainfall potential. Uh, even if this doesn't develop, that moisture surge late week, Thursday through Sunday, uh, mainly Friday through Sunday, but could be pretty impactful for some locations. Now, exactly where, it's just way too early to depict that. But I did want to show you uh, the European forecast model, and I'll show you. This is Saturday and into Sunday. Notice all these blues. Uh, that is very high moisture content. And let me go put this back on the actual, the PWATs, the precipitable water. And I'll show you this. Let's go put this on if I can find it. We'll show you the precipitable water and kind of show you the European. This is the European model. And you can see the big kind of slug of moisture. The system really doesn't develop all that much, kind of a depression or a weak tropical storm. But by the weekend, Saturday into Sunday, this shows some heavy rain for some parts of the northern Gulf Coast uh, as a result of what may be bill, maybe a depression, or maybe just an elongated trough axis of low pressure. So again, it's worth watching uh, for folks, especially across south central Mexico in the short term, and then eventually the northern Gulf Coast as we head towards this upcoming weekend. One last thing before I let you go, this is a look at the European ensembles. And I want to show you kind of a wide array of solutions. This is on Saturday. And you see all these little L's? This represents all of the different locations for where the system could be on Saturday. You get the idea? A lot of uncertainty remains. It could still be in the Bay of Campeche or it could be off the coast of Louisiana. Lots of uh, potential scenarios with regards to a system that hasn't formed yet. So take any model data that you see posted on social media with a big grain of salt. Until we actually get this system to develop, if it ever develops at all, we have to take the model guidance for what it's worth. And that is guidance, not gospel. That's my final statement of the day. Have a great rest of your Sunday. I'll, of course, have more updates over the next couple of days with regards to the tropical mischief in the Gulf of Mexico. As always, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook, meteorologist Scott Pelier. Bye, y'all.